Hello. In this video I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to modify some of the standard 20SIM library uh, bond graph components to model and simulate the system that's shown here. Let's suppose we have a uh, pump modeled as a transformer where we have a constant shaft speed of 3 radians per second. Uh, suppose the pump equations are shaft speed is pump modulus times flow rate Q1 out and pressure P1 at the pump outlet is equal to the same TP times the shaft torque. I'm going to set uh, TP to be 100. Suppose we're pumping water with a density of 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, we'll, we'll neglect pipe friction or inertia. So P1 is the pump outlet pressure. It's also the pressure at the bottom of this open tank, which we'll assume is round cross-section with diameter of one meter and the height is H. Flow into the tank is Q2. Flow that does not go into the tank, Q3, goes out through a valve, the pressure drop for which will be P1 minus atmospheric or P1. Uh, let's assume that the discharge coefficient of this valve is 0.8 and the nominal flow area is 0 0.007853 meters squared and we'll use the uh, pressure flow equation for the valve from the Carnap, Margolis, and Rosenberg text. I have brought in some of the standard uh, bond graph components. We will need a flow source to represent the constant pump speed. So I've already given these, uh, these elements uh, names which correspond to the physical system by right-clicking on them and choosing properties. So for constant pump speed, a flow source says that there's a parameter called flow. That's our actual uh, input quantity. I'm going to call that 3, or define that as 3. Here in this code block, after parameters, there's a code block for variables in which effort is declared. The equations are the power port flow is equal to this flow quantity which we've set up here, and effort is just defined as a variable for convenience which equals the port effort. Okay, so that's set equal to 3. So the flow source bond will go through the transformer. And let's see, we'll connect that. We'll connect the other port of the transformer to a zero junction with pressure P1. The tank pressure is P1, and the valve pressure drop is P1. So they're both connected to this zero junction. Now, the TP transformer. I need P1, which is the port 2 effort, to be TP times tau, which is the port 1 effort. You see, if I click on this bond, the bond coming out of the transformer goes from the transformer port P2 into the P1 zero junction. If I double click on this transformer, the default equations are, well, it calls the pump parameter R. I'm going to rename that TP and set it to my desired value of 100. I'll change TP here and here. Now the default 20 sim equations are not what I want. I don't want P1 effort to be modulus times P2's effort. I want P2 effort to be TP times P1 effort and I want P1 flow to be TP times P2 flow. If I check the submodel, I find that there are no errors and no warnings. So that's fine. I go up. Now the tank. Let's see, the standard tank C element declares a parameter for the capacitance. Uh, I would rather set my parameter to be the diameter. So let's say I declare a parameter D uh, and I set it equal to a value of 1. Now I can change this value in the simulation window if I click the parameters uh, button. So for now I'll say declare real D is equal to 1. Whoops, undo that. Accidental deletion. I will also declare the density of the fluid rho equal to 1000. If I want to comment anything in 20SIM, I do a double slash and then I do density kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, and comment statements will turn green. 
you also need a semicolon after each line of code. Now I am going to if I go down to the equations it says that state like for any C element is the integral of flow and that effort is state divided by capacitance. Now I know that for a open tank the capacitance C is equal to uh, the area A divided by rho times gravitational constant of 9.81. Alright, so I need a variable A. I need to compute the area somehow. Well, area A is equal to pi 3.1416 times the diameter squared divided by 4. Okay, so let's see. I need to declare some variables here. Parameters, D is a fixed constant. If I go down here and add a variables code block, I will declare real A and real D. Okay, so I'm not assigning them va values because they're variables. Alright, now if I check the submodel, it gives me an error. Uh, let's see, it says that D is already declared. Okay, so actually, D was my parameter. It's C that I need to declare. Check the model again, and now I have no errors. Okay, so suppose that I want to plot the height of the tank. I would need to declare another variable, H, and down here at the end of my code block, I would need to define H, which is equal to, let's see, what's H? H is volume divided by area. Volume is the state variable for an open tank capacitor. So the height should be state divided by the area A. Okay, now I can either declare this height as a variable H, or suppose I wanted to control the height of the tank then it would be good for me to be able to pull the variable h out as a signal which I could then put into a block diagram for control. I'll do that in part two of this video where I actually do control the tank height. So for now then I will move on to the valve. Standard valve R element declares the uh, linear resistance parameter and says that effort is R times flow. Now I've got a more complicated equation for uh, for the valve if I use the nonlinear relation from the textbook. First I want to discharge, uh, define my discharge coefficient as a parameter. 0 0.8 I said. Uh, density rho shows up in the valve law. And what else shows up in there? Uh, the nominal flow area A0 which I said in the picture was 7.8 5 times 10 to the minus 3, which I can enter as 7.85 e minus 3. Okay, now the equations. Um, I am going to need to modify this equation considerably. Now, the valve law can either be written as pressure as a function of flow or vice versa. Let me look at the causal strokes here. I'm going to go up to model. I'm going to analyze causality. In order for the tank to be in its preferred derivative causality, it defines the effort P1 to the zero junction, and therefore P1 is an input to the valve, and the valve equation has to output the flow. So I have to set up this valve so that the equation is P dot F equals flow is a function of pressure. Now the equation in the text, if you invert it, says that the flow rate is discharge coefficient times nominal flow area times the square root, SQRT, square root of 2 times the absolute value of pressure. How do I do absolute value? I just go ABS and put something in parentheses. Pressure is the effort on the power port, so I just go P dot E, that's 2 times absolute value of pressure divided by the density rho. Now, that has to be multiplied by the algebraic sign of the pressure. 
So if the pressure goes negative, I need to be able to have a flow in the negative direction. How do I do the algebraic sine of P? There's a built-in signum function. If I just go SIGN of P dot E, that function is going to return 1 if the effort is greater than 0, minus 1 if the effort is negative, and 0 if the effort is 0. Okay. Let me check this submodel. Down below it says it's okay. So this is a fairly significant change. Now if the causal stroke was to move on this valve, if I added other elements into the system, I would probably have to go in and redo that equation so that p dot e equaled instead of p dot f equals. So I don't think 20 sim could rearrange that equation if this causal stroke moved from one end of the bond to the other. Okay, so let's check the complete model. It says that I have eight variables, one independent state, which is the tank volume. Now I'll go to the simulator window, and uh, let's see, what should I plot here? I can plot whatever I want. I'm going to plot the, uh, I'm going to plot the pump speed. Now I can either take the flow out of the uh, flow source, or if I change this flow source to something different, um, I can always get the flow, sorry, I can always get the pump speed as port 1 flow on the transformer. Okay, so port 1 flow on the transformer is the shaft speed omega. So I'll take that and I will call it pump shaft speed in radians per second. I'm going to plot the valve flow rate. I'll click on valve and I'll take P dot F, the flow of the valve, valve flow rate in meters cubed per second. And the final thing I will plot is, um, let me plot the tank height. So I'll go into the tank and I'll just select the H variable that I defined, tank height in meters and OK. Now, uh, let me see, when I run the simulation, the parameters are already set. If I change TP from 100 to 1000, it'll change it in the code block of the transformer automatically. I'm going to set some initial conditions here. Uh, I can set the initial state of the tank, or the initial volume of the tank. Suppose I want the initial tank height to be 0 0.5 meters. Height is volume over area. So volume would be height times area. Uh, let me see. My area was pi d to the pi d squared over 4. Um, so what's that approximately? Pi d squared over 4. d was 1, so pi over 4 is about 0 0.8. And um, if the height is a half, I'll set the initial tank volume to be 0 0.4. Okay, that should correspond roughly to a, a initial tank height of 0.5 meters. All right, now I can begin the simulation. Let's see what happens. Just hit run. Uh, the default setup is to run it for 10 seconds. Maybe I'll run it for 40 seconds. It defaults to the backward differentiation formula numerical method, which is fairly robust. We'll leave it at that for now. We'll hit plot. Okay, so what's happening here? Um, the valve flow rate's so low I can't see it on this scale, so I'm going to hit the uh, distribute curves button. Now I can see that I have a pump shaft speed of 3, which is constant, which is what I said. The valve flow rate is gradually going up. Okay, so the pump is putting some water into the tank because the tank height is increasing. Um, some of the flow is going out through the valve, so tank height's going up, valve flow rate is increasing as well. So in the next video, uh, I'm going to attempt to control the height of the tank using the same initial conditions so that the shaft speed is controlled to be whatever it needs to be to drive the tank height to one meter and keep it there.